This is the highest selling scooter in the country and Honda just did another facelift to their most successful model. The Activa outsells its rivals on a 6 to 1 ratio and in this video we try to find out what is it that makes this scooter a popular choice. I've never ridden the Activa before so this is my first time and if it's your first time on my channel please hit that subscribe button and also turn on the bell icon for future video notifications. So you might be asking me what's new about the 5th generation. Styling wise only the two chrome strips are added to the bodywork but they have added a full LED DRL unit along with LED headlamps which looks really cool. The front fairing gets a new shape which is making it look much sharper than the previous version. The rear brake lights are however not LEDs but they're pretty big and functional. Available in 8 colorways, this is the new colorway for 2018, the Dazzle Yellow Metallic. I think it looks absolutely gorgeous in bright sun and also it is more visible during night time. The scooter now comes in two variants, a standard and deluxe. The deluxe version gets this partial digital console which has the eco mode indicator and the service reminder. Let me quickly take you through the console as it boots up. The indicators are on so that's the left indicator over there. I'm sure it does on the right side as well. This dash actually reminds me a lot of the dash on my Honda City and it's the similar color scheme as well. The top side is just the speedometer and this is the button for the trip meter. So below which is the digital part which is only there in the deluxe version so you're paying 2000 rupees extra for the deluxe version and all you get is this digital console and i say that it is quite uh, worth the upgrade because it has a lot of information if you press this button you have to go in really hard and it shows your trip meter as well as odometer so single trip meter and odometer then you have the fuel gauge which is very nice i think it's 5.3 liter fuel tank capacity should be good enough for a range of around 300 kilometers this is the clock which has not been set correctly it's 5 30 a.m in the morning right now but useful set of information you have a clock you have the odo slash trip meter and you have the fuel gauge powered by the same 109 cc engine with 8 bhp of power and 9 newton meters of torque the activa 5g is not about performance. The Honda Eco Technology BS4 compliant engine is more tuned towards mileage and it delivers a stellar mileage of 60 km per liter which is incredible in scooter terms. The VMATIC automated gearbox takes away the clutch and gear operation as always with any scooter. Under the boot there is 18 liters of storage space and a port for an optional USB charger but it doesn't have enough room to fit in a full face helmet as we sadly found out. Additionally, there are two hooks to hang your shopping bags so you can carry more stuff or even go to the local market with these. The engine cover panels are metallic but the panel below the headlights are plastic. The paint job is very well finished and the switches, though made from economic plastic, have a good finish to them and a good feel. If anything that bothered me was the quality of mirrors and Honda has done some serious cost cutting in that. The Activa has the tightest turning radius that I've ever seen on any motorcycle or scooter. Even on the narrowest of alleyways, it could do a full U-turn. If you live somewhere which has a lot of narrow alleys, this scooter could be your best friend. Pillion comfort is always stressed on any scooter. My friend rode Pillion with me for over 20 kilometers and when switching back to the Duke 390, he complained that the KTM seat was solid as wood. Scooters I think have more comfort for the Pillion rider than the rider themselves and there is a huge grab rail as well for the Pillion to grab onto. We thank Rishav from Duga Honda for letting us test out the Honda Activa scooter, however they are not influencing this review. If you are interested in booking any Honda motorcycle or scooter, do give a call on the number on screen and I'm sure they'll be happy to help you out. But that's all about the specs and it was finally time to roll out and test the new scooter on the road. For today's test, we'll be first doing some open roads and then take it to the narrowest alleyways of Kolkata, escaping from those alleys with the Activa coming on top. Stop, we'll head out to the old city for a ride beside the river and with some dodging of pedestrians in a crowded market. 
finally we'll top it off with some discussion and test out the top speed and conclude the review riding the honda activa let's talk a little bit about the ergonomics because that's where we start all the time it is very upright as you can see very comfortable the seats are really wide and the pillion seat is wider than the rider seat so the pillion will be in much greater comfort if you're a taller person you can just sit back and get a lot of more room so you know it's accessible to all types of riders and the seat height is very low but it manages a decent amount of ground clearance about the new led headlamps and drls i think they look absolutely gorgeous and right at night we tested out the headlight efficiency i was pretty impressed so that's off the headlight test now we will turn the scooter on that's the low beam this is the high beam see the difference over there right over there low high yeah it's pretty good i mean the headlights nice you don't really get that with scooters uh, i think in future you would and the honda grazia does have led headlamps so that's a great thing now cornering i wouldn't be too happy about it but this is not a performance scooter and i think it's underbone chassis is working fine but the front is still not having a telescopic suspension so that you do feel sometimes in the harshest of terrains uh, the right quality gets affected the suspension setup is however set to soft so over smaller bumps and undulations on the road or even on some bad patches it it goes really nicely uh, and for normal handling it isn't bad at all actually it has the one of the weakest throttle responses and what i've seen so far is that even if you open up the throttle fully see how delayed the power delivery is it's it's not really enjoyable but i can understand that this is a beginner friendly and more of a mileage friendly setup than being on a performance side of setups it does okay in corners and for this type of a cruiser or commuter scooter i am pretty much happy with whatever performance it's giving on the cornering the dash like i was saying it's right out of the honda city sort of color scheme and uh, it's really easy to read the speedo so they've designed it pretty well they've used up all this space and uh, i really really like the digital part because it's telling me that i have a lot of fear left which is always a good thing for any biker or rider and you have that odo and the clock as well i like having a clock as well because i don't wear a watch and while riding the motorcycle i cannot check uh, go inside my pockets and check the uh, time on my phone so i i really like having that on my dash usb charging port as an accessory which is inside uh, your boot space so uh, I wish they had given that as standard but it's not standard even on the deluxe version by the way the deluxe version is 2000 rupees more pricier than the standard version the brakes on the scooter aren't that good I mean they're sufficient enough for braking from 40 to 50 kilometers per hour I haven't had much issues with it you have to use the rear brake though uh, because the front brake only approach will not work and that is there with all scooters so I'm not complaining but the scooter does go to a top speed of around 83 kilometers per hour if you are to break down from 80 these brakes are not sufficient so you would need more braking distance and a lot of people have been complaining that it needs alloy wheels and telescopic suspension even on the suspension it doesn't feel all that bad you have to understand the market that they're targeting this and for that i think it can do even with this normal wheel and uh, the the suspension that is currently running but adding the disc brake i think is a must because that's where you're looking into safety and while you're thinking about safety this is one of the scooters that actually has honda's combi brake technology or the cbs which means if you engage too much of the rear brake 
<coughs> it feeds in the front so that you don't rock, lock up the rear. That's useful for beginner riders. That increases your braking performance. And the CBS technology, I've ridden it on the Honda Hornet, uh, which was in 2016, I believe. Just adding the disc brakes up front, I think this would be the perfect scooter. And we don't really need telescopic suspension and alloy wheels, is my verdict on it. The Active is designed for the tightest of urban spaces right so why don't we try it out in some tight little urban space and see what it feels like oh yeah we're having a lot of fun ditching through some really tight spaces and i must say it feels right at home the turning radius on the scooter is insane you can do full 360 turns and u-turns on very thin roads and just turning it through alleyways and everything is pretty easy I'd like to show you how it feels because I was so impressed by the turning radius that I actually had to come over to places like this and show you how it's done. Right? So that's how it feels to have the Activa. So this is what the Activa feels very natural to ride in. And I think we hit a block. Can we pass? I am not really sure. Haha, <laughs> we managed to squeeze through without touching anything. Okay, maybe not to this one, or maybe, yeah, <laughs> I cannot believe how this scooter can go through stuff. The Activa felt relaxed in every situation. The almost non-existent response of the throttle kind of reminded me of the relaxed North Kolkata's lifestyle. So that is where we headed next. so happy that she didn't get run over by the bus a lot of parents don't buy their kids motorcycles thinking that motorcycles are unsafe and buy them scooters because scooters are slower and i understand that point of view i just don't understand why you would go for something for a young person that doesn't have enough brakes because young people do have the tendency to ride a little faster and brake a little bit later so let's take out take the top speed we are currently at around 80 right we're doing 85 i believe full throttle now i'm used to much higher speeds i think we have gone close to 90 so we've broken the uh, company claimed speed limit and we're still rising when i go down i'm gonna test out the brakes it's it's not bad you know it's not bad it's just that we're craving for a bit more <sighs> always take a look at whoever's behind you before taking these left turns and finally we are back we're back at Duga Honda the dealership who lent us the bike Honda Activa follows a simple rule 
to product design. Instead of giving high-end features and increasing the price, they understand the basic market and have provided features that appeal to the common rider. It is comfortable, has a lot of storage and with combi braking technology, it is also quite safe. The lighter weight makes handling easy for women riders or even shorter riders. They have given it a big ground clearance which means it never scrapes on speed breakers even with a heavy billion on board and the new LED headlamps perform very well in dark conditions. If you are that kind of a guy who cares about disc brakes, alloy wheels and a telescopic suspension, all you have to do is move one step up the ladder and buy the Honda Grazia instead which we absolutely love. I think Honda wanted to create a clear distinction between the basic model and the more advanced model the Grazia and keep the basic market engaged with a stellar price tag and good mileage. And I think that is where the key of the Honda Activa success is and it will continue through its fifth generation. Remember to hit that subscribe button guys, it would mean a lot if I could hit 100k. I've been doing this channel for the last four years, one subscribe means a lot to us and don't forget that bell button. Thanks for watching and I'll see you very, very soon. This is Rahul. Goodbye.